Hey guys, it's Linux Benchmarks here, and in today's video, I wanted to teach you guys how to install and run mods on Linux, as I think it's one of the type of videos that doesn't really get made that often, and often when you try to run mods on Linux, it can be quite confusing, and you go down this huge rabbit hole of like forums on Reddit, and it just gets really confusing when it comes to, you know, trying to set up mods, or if like the mods aren't working, so that's what I wanted to do in today's video, is how to set up mods on Linux. So I'll just get straight into it. One of the tools that we uh, Linux users do use for setting up mods, not every, not everyone uses it, but it's a big um, like helper when it comes to setting up things like Vortex and stuff is Steam Tinker Launch. This is a type of tool that you can just um, install all types of different things, Game Scope, Vortex, Mod Organizer 2. It's kind of like a little hub for like just installing things for you without you having to go research you know how to install game scope manually or vortex manually or mod organizer 2 or you know changing like wine prefixes and stuff like that but it, like i said it's a really good help when it when it comes to setting up mods as it installs vortex and mod organizer 2 for you so installing this is quite easy um if you're on the system version you need to install the required um dependencies which are here i'll link this uh, all down below so you can check uh, these dependencies to make sure they're installed on your system. If you're on Flatpak and you want to install Steam Tinker Launch, that's quite easy. You can either go to your terminal. Um, you can just do uh, Flatpak in, install Steam Tinker launch and as you can see here you can um, find it install it i'm not going to install it because i'm going to be using the system version of steam for today for after you've like done the required dependencies you want to grab proton up this is a, an app that lots of people use for um, injecting proton into steam lutris bottles um, i specifically don't use proton up but this is the one that supports uh, steam tinker launch so after you install the app image build don't install the flat pack build if you install the flat pack build it's not going to come up when it comes to um, Steam Tinker Launch uh, coming up in the install compatibility tool. You can actually get it to work, but you need the required dependencies. And that could be quite confusing on the Flatpak. So just grab the app image for now. And then uh, if all the required dependencies are installed, uh, you should be able to install the latest Steam Tinker Launch version, which is 12.12 .12 of making the, uh, today's video. All right, so one of the things that I forgot to say is that for the launch option command here, it says that you should only use this is if it's on a native uh, Linux game. If not, which the majority of games aren't native on Linux, they run through Proton. So like I said before, you just want to force the compatibility on Steam Tinker Launch, and then you just want to launch the game. And it'll come up with a menu here uh, for different options on your main menu, where you can select to install different types of things like Vortex, Mod Organizer 2. So you can see here, here is Vortex. We want to click on Vortex. It's going to launch another window, and then we want to click install we want to select our version of proton so i'm gonna uh, just select proton 8.04c uh, which is the latest stable version of proton on steam so it's just going to use the um, proton versions that we already have installed on um, in our directory in steam so um, i would just recommend just selecting the, the normal version as that would probably be the best option uh, you can do proton ge as well um, but just to be safe, I would probably just use the normal Proton, like the latest um, stable Proton. All right, and after it goes through all the install windows, um, it's basically uh, done and we can just click start and this will start Vortex for us where we can you know, log into our Vortex account. As we can see, it's just preparing it for us. It's applying some Vortex settings for the game that we have selected, which is Skyrim, um, the Skyrim Special Edition. As you can see, Vortex is finally launching. They're doing some like setups. Once this loads, um, we can just log into to our account so open this here want to authorize it um, if you're not logged in you log into nexus mods and then you just you know, connect it and then it's going to ask if you want to download some things allow some diagnostics i'm going to deny that i don't want it to really pick up anything um, there is a major update for um vortex it seems so we want to download that all right we want to restart vortex so the window will come up which is just like the windows which it, it is actually the windows installer i'm um, running through wine which is pretty cool it cannot be closed try again oh, we gotta we gotta close vortex wherever that is search for vortex 
X. Can it full stop this? We go retry. Okay, now it's installing it. It seems like Wine couldn't close um, the Vortex.exe, which is um, quite weird. I don't know why I wasn't able to do that, but we just did it manually then. Now it's able to actually install the update. Um, now we can run Vortex again. All right, and now that we have updated Vortex, we can finally start, you know, adding some, some games and then uh, adding some mods to those games. So then we can, you know, start playing games with mods. So we chose um, Skyrim. So we're going to choose um, Skyrim Special Edition as that's the one I own. It says that I have some mods from previous stuff, which I did. Um, now it's going to start, you know, setting it up properly. Um, mods changed on disk. Mods have been changed on disk. This means that mods that were managed to Vortex disappeared. All the mods that Vortex probably didn't know about appeared in the staging folder since the last time it checked. It's highly, highly discouraged to modify the staging folder outside Vortex in any way. All right, so we'll apply these changes just to fix that problem. Um, so I like to muck around with uh, different Vortex managers on different, like on bottles and stuff like that. That's probably why um, it, that came up. Um, but we can enable these mods that we already have installed. Um, I'm pretty sure, what does it say? This mod has no source assigned. The source tells Vortex where the mod came from and applicable. Uh, we probably need to actually remove these because you know it can't find the source of where these actually like originally came from in their version so probably just want to install this manually so we'll do install from file go to our home directory downloads to where the mods are because i already have some here we can install script extender we got the quality world map this changes the map in skyrim to something a bit more like quality of life improvement what else and then we probably want the all-in-one address library as well just so we want any other mods that require that type of um, library and that's basically it as we can see it's enabling the mods properly um, I remember a while back when Vortex uh, didn't really support Proton that much and what would happen is um, you would have to run a really old version of Vortex and it was like for one buggy and there was like dependencies issues and it was just it was really bad, but now it's pretty good. And I know that Vortex, they are working on a um, separate new mod manager that will support Linux. So this won't matter within like a year or two, maybe. Uh, but for now, this does matter. This is the way you kind of have to do it um, within Steam, of course. Of course, our save files and everything are working and our settings are working. So now we can just load into the game and we can have a look at the quality um, of life, like map mod that we applied, which will change a couple of things. And as you can see, the game is uh, working and we can go into our map and i'm pretty sure this is the quality of life improvement mod i don't think the map uh normally looks like this if it does then i guess the mod isn't working all right so i, I did disable the quality of life improvement on the map uh mod and as you can see here um this is with the mod disabled and it's way worse i would say i mean it's not bad by any means but it is uh, the quality of life improvement on that map mod is uh, a lot better than the one that is normally in the game. So um, that means that like the mod is working. And so um, there's nothing really else to say about setting up this on Steam. Uh, if we wanted to set this up, let's say on bottles, I know you can do it on Lutris, but for some reason it's using an older version of wine, which we could easily uh, replace. So on bottles though, you just, you know, you want to create a bottle called vortex i already tested this a really like a long time ago i would say like a week ago i tested it and you want to just grab the vortex.exe and then uh launch it and you basically you just go through the same exact steps as you did with steam tinkle launch and it'll just install the dependencies for you and um you could just start like grabbing the games from your steam library or if you have let's say pirated games uh you know if it, let's say it, those pirated games are on a second drive um you will need to give bottles access to that second drive by going to manage drives and then adding your path and then also adding a permission on flat seal um if you're running the bottles flat pack which you should because that is the official maintained package version of bottles so you just want to add a uh, path um here and you would just do like for me it's like slash games and then bottles can see that so what if you want to mod games like Valheim or Lethal Company. Well, um, instead of using uh, Vortex, or which I don't think even you don't even use Vortex for those games, you use um, Thunderstore or something like that. Um, we use an app called R2 Modman Plus, which is a basically almost like identical to the Thunderstore, and it even is on the Thunderstore. So if you go to like the Thunderstore, you can actually download it um, for Windows. If we go to our releases here, now this only works for system version of Steam, so. If you're running the flatpak version of steam this is not going 
going to work with the Flatpak Steam because it can't see those games in the Flatpak Steam. There is a uh, proposal to bring this to Flatpak, but it's the issue is like really long, so it only works on system. So for me, I'm gonna grab the .rpm. It's already downloaded, so all I have to do is just find it, um, which it is right here. And so all you have to do really now is just find your game, like Valheim. We just select our game. It will find it automatically, and it will just create a. You know, we have to create a profile here. Now this is where you can like import mods. So if you have like a code from a friend or something like that, you can just go from code, and then it will import all the mods for you of, of their like profile. So we already have just the Bepinix, um in here, uh, but we can grab a bunch, and then basically after that's done, we can just do start modded. I mean, Steam isn't launched for me at the moment, so I might have to wait a little bit. And now that we have Steam open, it's now launching Valheim automatically for us since we've selected uh, start modded. As you can see there, the Bepinix, uh little terminal showed up. That means that uh, you know the mod uh, manager is working. So when it, when it comes to like mods on this, this is actually like, so easy to get set up and running. I run a Valheim server with mods and it, it works perfectly fine with, with it running on uh, Nabora. So, you know, if we go to settings and we go to profile and then we go to, actually we go to all. If we go to settings, we go to all and then we go change game. We can go to like Lethal Company, do this one. And uh, if we already have a small profile, we click start modded on this one. This one should be able to launch as well. There we go. <laughs> Uh, as you can see here, we, we have the more company mod on. So that's how we know um, that the mod is running. That's like one way of knowing. And yeah, there you go. It, that's basically it for, you know, um, other games that you want to use like Lethal Company or Valheim. When it comes to like something like Minecraft, you want to do modding with that. You can just use um, Prism Launcher, which if you already know to use Prism Launcher, it should be pretty easy. I already have a video as well made about Minecraft, um, setting up mods and shaders and all that. So you can definitely go watch that video um that was a couple of months ago but it's still valid today so yeah um oh, this is about to do it for this video so if you guys uh, like this video definitely give it a like you definitely subscribe to the channel if you want to we are getting kind of close to 2k subscribers but um it's no biggie you don't have to subscribe if you don't want to and then also thank you to my two supporters uh, on this channel uh you know i really appreciate um that a lot uh, as, as always uh, and i'll see you guys in the uh, next video peace